do we build our dreams when we don't know what we want? Learn how Flaunt solves this problem in five bold and glittery steps with radio host Laura Cheadle. Using a combination of best girlfriend discussions and therapy-based exercises, listeners are taught how to build their dreams and live their sparkle. Flaunt. Find your fetish. Laugh out loud. Accept unconditionally. Navigate the negative and trust in your truth. Hello, welcome to Flaunt, Build Your Dreams and Live Your Sparkle. I'm Laura Cheadle, and I just wanted to take a few minutes before we launch into today's show to tell you some of the exciting things that are coming up in my sparkly world of Flaunt. First of all, my book is officially done. It is at the publisher's Edits are all done, and I am putting together my book tour. So please sign up for book alerts. Go to laurachedle.com. That's L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E, laurachedle.com. If you go to the bottom, there's this little place where you can put in your email address, and I will send you my little free ebook, 15 Ways to Flaunt Today. And then that way you will be on my email list and you will be the first to know when I am on tour across the U.S. publicizing my book and doing book signings. I've got a couple of book signings already set in Colorado in November. I'm also heading to Seattle in November. Um, December's not totally structured yet because it's the holidays and we're all busy and we're all crazy. But then in January, I will be taking off again, hitting both Northern California, Southern California. Then I'm gonna be looping clear around to the East Coast doing some New York, some DC, some Florida. Oh, I'm also doing Florida over Thanksgiving. So you will definitely not want to miss me and my book tour coming to your city. Also, since I'm still in the planning stages, I have the luxury of creating some of my own stops. So if you have got something exciting in your city and you think Flaunt would be a good fit for you or for your organization, please let me know. I am happy to do speaking. I'm happy to put, happy to put on a workshop. Um, just let me know. I can get you some books for your organization and we can make a party out of it because 2020 is going to be all about me actually getting out there and meeting you in real life. It's been wonderful to have this virtual space, but I am looking forward to some real one-on-one -on -one personal connections. So there is that. Another exciting thing that I wanted to share with you, and again, this is like kind of in the future, but come November and December, I do a lot of free online events. In November, I do my gratitude and grace, Facebook lives and um, one hour video conferencing that you can access either live or you can download later on. And then in December, I do the Find Your Sparkle and I do the free calls and the Facebook and the challenges and all of that good stuff. So right now, I want you to go to Facebook if you're on Facebook. I want you to find me and I want you to join the Flaunt Flock. Flaunt, F-L-A-U-N-T, Flock. And it's a Facebook group. And once you're in that Facebook group, then you're gonna have access to all of my free calls, all of my materials, all of my videos, all of that good stuff. So go ahead and join now. Get prepared right now. Because if you're prepared now and you're a part of the group now, then come Thanksgiving and you know December when all of the holidays, holidays hit full force, you will be all ready, you'll be happy, you'll be joyful, you'll be connected, and you will already have a support system in place, and you will already be used to reaching out for support, which is really helpful to set things up beforehand so 
once things hit and it's stressful, you're not all of a sudden trying to implement something last minute. I find that that sometimes is even more stressful. So be proactive. Get yourself focused right now on some of that support and that connection, make friends with some other people. And then that way you too can have the most magical, sparkly holiday season ever. So with that, let's move into today's show. And our incredible guest, Joey Natolo, will talk not only about yoga and dealing with stressors, but a lot of the things that he did to get himself through one of the most difficult times in his life. First of all, I'm looking forward to it because there's a lot of talk about mental illness in the United States. There's a lot of talk about what we should do about it. There's a lot of talk about how it can be stigmatized. There's a lot of talk about what it actually means and are you really crazy, quote unquote, or are you just different? Or There's a lot of conversation that's going on right now around mental illness. And as somebody who has been very connected to spirit her whole life intuitively, I feel like I have in the past, sometimes been told, oh my gosh, Laura, you're crazy. When I say, oh, I dreamed about that and it happened. Or when I have said things like, I've got a really strong feeling and I'm not gonna do something or other. And people will say, that's just crazy, that's just crazy. So I feel like there's been that pressure sometimes that's been put on me too, in terms of if I'm honoring my spirituality and my innate intuition, are you crazy? And then there's times where I think maybe I am crazy and what's normal and what's not normal. And it's this whole big crazy spectrum and all these people are talking about it. And I think it's really important to continue this conversation. And that is my intention for today. We are going to continue this conversation around mental illness, mental health, spirituality, that whole continuum and what it means. And we are going to do that with a pretty incredible guest. Now, I'm not gonna to say too much about him because I want to let his story unfold naturally as you are listening today's, to today's show. So with that, I would like to bring on my incredible guest, Joey Notolo. Welcome to the show, Joey. I can't wait to share your story with my listeners. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me, how are you? I am fantastic, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. Good. Let's just dive right in. Mental illness. Okay, what does that mean to you in your experience? Um, that's a loaded question. I know! <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know. I think that the lines of mental illness are so, so blurred. Um, I found myself, you said earlier, just now talking, you know, that you'll you'll pick up on things and that people will say that's crazy and it's funny because people pay money to go see like people that have superhero powers and all the time right oh yeah but yet yeah but yet if we say that we are able or, or think that we can access this they'll tell us that we're that we're crazy and it's funny you know um i found myself in a mental institution uh but it wasn't i, I didn't say i had any superpowers i i mean i guess they they could have seemed like superpowers, but um, I, uh, I went in, I told them that I, I, I heard voices and that was the issue is I, I probably should have said I felt voices, <laughs> but right. Because I didn't really understand what was happening and I was nervous and I was afraid at the time. So I said, I, I could hear voices talking to me and the only thing they could come up with is schizophrenia. And I'm like, I, I don't feel schizophrenic. I don't feel like I'm crazy. I feel fine. And, um, it led to several mental institutions and, you know, several psychiatrists. You, I mean, you name it. And ultimately, the, way, the only way that my family would let me come home because they were kind of nervous that I was saying that I could hear these things. So they wanted me on medication. Um, and so due to that, uh, I never went back home. I didn't, I didn't take the medication. Yeah. So I don't know, you know. I, I I am a very sane and lucid human being, and I just uh, I had an awakening. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I want to kind of go back to something that you said because I really liked it when you said that you had explained it as you heard voices and that maybe you should have said you felt voices. Right. That, yeah, that resonated so strongly with me because yeah, people pay money to come see me to do to give them angel readings. And oftentimes I will say I'm seeing, you know, something and they'll say, do you really see it? And it's interesting because no. It's not like something is physically walking in front of me. It's an internal seeing. And right. same, I have heard things, but it's a different kind of, it's a different experience. And I think it's very difficult and very limiting to put words on an experience that we are not trained to describe. You know what I'm saying? Like growing up, we're trained to describe water as wet and we can describe the feeling of things that we can all kind of compare but when it's an awakening like you had when it's some sort of spiritual thing we're not given that common understanding and that language to describe what's happening to us and what it means yeah it, it's funny the um my my son's daughter asked this question yesterday she's like what do you mean that that you um that you what do you mean that you 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 feel voices or hear voices and um i said it's like this i told her i said if somebody walks in the room behind you and you can't see them but they say your name you can feel them you hear them you can't see them but you can feel them it's the same thing. It's just, you can't see them, you know, so you can hear it. You, you feel it. It's just the, you know, you want to look at, you want to turn around and look at them because you, you have, that's just human nature. But in these instances, when you start to pick up on, on these other vibrations, you, uh, it's a feeling, you know, I can say I can hear it sometimes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would get, I would get goosebumps all over my body, which I never did before. I was, you know, I was a 48 year old man when this happened to me. I have four kids, very, very successful person, produced movies, and life as, as I knew it, I had everything under control, they say, right? Mm -hmm. Everything was right where I had it under control, as I thought. And as soon as that happened, and, and it's like somebody showed me there's something else going on, right? At the ripe old age of 48, someone decided to show me that there's a whole nother realm that's going on right here. Right. And, and when that, ha when that happened, it, it, I didn't even know I could start crying thinking about, it. I didn't even know because I was geared and taught how to deal with this reality. And I wasn't prepared to understand that at the time. So at the best of my ability, I was trying to make them understand and, and explain to them the best of my ability, what was happening to me. Um, but with no real resources, you know, to do it because if the doctors were saying, oh, schizophrenic or bipolar, you know, police were coming around saying, I was straight, it, it just, there was no, there was nothing for me. The only, the only thing I could do was I started doing Kundalini yoga. Hmm. Kundalini yoga for me was, uh, I guess was the uh, prescription they gave uh, at the yoga studio and it worked because what was happening and the reason why the the doctors couldn't diagnose this is because it's a it's energy based and they're not trained in an energy type of situation in western medicine no um, yeah so that the yoga helped me to i would stay balanced the energies that were i was picking up on so that i didn't blow myself out um or freak myself out right it, uh, yeah so the kundalini yoga for me was was a big help major help oh that's interesting that's really interesting okay so so i would like you to backtrack a bit and explain in detail what happened with your awakening experience for the listeners because it's my guess that some of the listeners out there might also have an understanding because something similar has happened to them and that they haven't really understood what's going on yeah. and okay yeah, 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 and just you know, like that, just tell your story. Okay, so I was going to work every day, I produced movies, I was very successful, and it, it seriously it was like one day I woke up, um, 
And my best friend since I was 14 had passed away. Uh, he, he, he was a big drinker and he drank himself to death. And I don't think there was more things happening than just that, but it resulted in, in his, his leaving. Um, probably about took about two and a half months. There was a certain time period and I, I, he, he came back and I can hear him trying to communicate with me. Um, it wasn't like I was so blase about it. Like, Oh, he's trying to communicate. No, I, I was, I was freaking out. I, I didn't understand. I went to his sister and I said, your brother's trying to talk to me. I feel, um, and she, she just, she shut the door and just tell me everything he's saying. And I think that, that just having the loss that people want to, that they, they'll do anything to communicate with a loved one. And at the time I was just so excited that it was happening. I, it didn't really hit me yet. Like, wait, what if I'm not, this isn't happening. And I'm, I'm like bullshitting myself and her. I didn't know, you know, so then I was in this, this quandary, but she wanted to keep talking and, and for me to keep passing this information, she was crying. I was crying and you know, she couldn't, it, it was a lot going on. So I decided, I'm like, you know, I don't know. And I don't want to keep giving this information. So I'm so weird. I went and I, I said, let's go to take a lie detectors test together and write all these questions down and see if I pass. I go, because my subconscious and my conscious mind will know. And I go, either I'm totally crazy or I believe what I'm saying or it's real. And she went with it. And we went down to a place that does lie detectors test in Van Nuys, California, across the street from the police station. They did like 7,000 uh, lie detectors tests on federal agents and, and police officers. Wow. And she went with it. Yeah, she went with me. And we just did it as fun. Like, I, I, I mean, it was more for me. She told me, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But I, <clears throat> I'm a very, in, I, I wanted to know. I just had to know. Right. So she wrote these questions. They're all yes and no questions down. And, and I took it and I passed the test twice with flying colors. And it's so funny because this was the thing I go, this, now I'm going to show my wife this. I got her. Right. Right. Um, and I took it home and she goes, nah, I don't, I don't believe that. I know how smart you are. And I, it, there was nothing I could really do because at the time, really, I'd say the most important thing to me was money. Right. Mm. That was, that, that was the, what I was, I was, I was a street kid and I knew that money was it. So at the time, what I did was I said, take everything. I want you to take all the money, everything we have. And what I was trying to do is show her how serious I was because she knew that like I was a full business dude. And if I was to say, here, take all this, I want you to believe what I'm, where I'm coming from. Right. She looked, you know what she said to me? What? She goes, now I know you're crazy. You would have never done that. Wow. She goes, you would, she goes, you would have never done that. And I was like, wait a minute. So at, at every kind of stop and everything I had done, it was really the more I tried to convince people I was not crazy, I looked crazy. Yes. And I, and I just wanted to be accepted. Um, and now time has passed. I'm not going to say I'm completely on the other side of it, but I, I'm shooting a podcast called The Space Between. And my son, my, my former wife is the first person I interviewed. Um, cause I wanted to, I wanted to understand from both sides what she saw. Cause she, she, she was convinced that the person she was with for 21 years fell completely sick to mental illness. And I was done. My family wouldn't even look at me anymore. They wouldn't take pictures. Oh my gosh. So, okay. There, there's like so much that that brings up. I find it interesting that the mental illness diagnosis got put in there so quickly right away because it seems like you were just seeking some clarity and some information yourself because you didn't know what was happening to you either. And how scary to all of us and have people saying you are crazy. <laughs> you know what it is, is that, I think the part right there is that when you really feel and know that you're not crazy, because I, I felt lucid, I knew everything. I felt that there was a conspiracy against me. I felt that they were like, why? I thought that they were crazy or, you know, I didn't understand. because I was like, wait a minute, what is going on here? Why doesn't anyone understand what's happening or what to do? Right. Like, this is, this is like, I'm supposed to feel safe right now. And I feel completely, completely unsafe. 
And so then I started thinking of all the other people, homeless people and people that are dealing with this. And I was like, something's got to do something about this. This isn't, this isn't okay. This is not okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was the idea to, uh, to look at it and be able to hear and create this podcast so that people could hear from both sides, the people that were acting crazy, but yet the people that were trying to help the people that they thought were crazy. So both sides. And so now my ex-wife and me are raising our four kids consciously and they, you know, they know that dad's a yogi and, and, and it's all changing, you know, I mean, we went through a lot when I'm not together. I love, we're, we're raising them. We, we, we love our kids and it's cool. It's cool now, but it was right. not cool. No, it's hard, you know, and once you're diagnosed with crazy, you can't get a second opinion. No, that's a so, ab- great point. You're done. You're and, and so they, I was locked up. I was a businessman. All my businesses were shut, I, not shut down, but my, my wife had the power of attorney because once I was committed to 5150, I lost all my rights. Oh my gosh. Everything. So they had my credit cards, everything. And so unless I took medication, I couldn't come home. So I was really kind of like in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. No kidding. So how did you finally, because I know you said you refused to do the medication. How did you finally break free? Who did you find to help you? And how did you get out of that? Because that's really scary. I, I found a woman. Uh, her name is Tage. Tage is a, a Kundalini master in LA and Hollywood, California. Um, the neighbor. Her, her yoga center is called Nine Treasures Yoga. Now, the interesting part of this story was, is I wasn't, I never done yoga in my life at this time, okay? But what had happened was, I started waking up at three in the morning and I started meditating and I'd never done that before. Well, mm-hmm. one of the other people that started talking to me in my shower was the man by the name of Yogi Bhajan. He, I don't know if you know who he is, Yogi Bhajan brought Kundalini Yoga to North America. So when this guy started communicating with me, for one, I'm not an in, I'm not Indian and I don't wear a turban. Yoga right. is not my thing. Right. That that started to make me feel like something was something was off. You know. Um, so I was led to Tage, one of his first students, and I I I told her I said I'm communicating with your teacher. I think. And she smiled and looked at me and it took us a couple of minutes and she looked at me, she says, yes, you are. And we became close. We became close friends. I, I ended up traveling to India, becoming a Kundalini yoga teacher, instructor. Um, and you know, now my son and me, my son's doing yoga, my daughter, and it's now the new normal. So we're all crazy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> In a really good way, I think. Okay. Exactly. For- yeah, for listeners who don't know what kundalini yoga is, and I, and I practice yoga, I, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. But for people who are thinking, yoga, isn't that something you do at the gym? Kundalini, what does that mean? Isn't that, what is that? Can you explain to listeners who have no schema what that whole thing is about? There's, yeah, absolutely. There's several different types of yoga. And, and for kundalini yoga, it's, it's, it's holding these postures and forms. And it's breath work as well. But when you're holding these postures and these forms, um, it's a technology that helps you with your, I would say, balance the energy with your central nervous system. So you hold postures and forms in a certain way for a certain period of time, and these trigger certain endorphins in your mind, your brain, you know, the way your, your, your body works, so that the energy that's going through your body, at least for me, was, was more balanced. Um, and I feel that, you know, they say that the balance, your body, mind, and soul, it's so important that you have the balance of all three of these. And I think the way we live these days that we don't, you know, we're, we're putting food in our body that we don't even realize what we're putting in. We're doing these things. We don't realize our, our body is an instrument. Mm-hmm. It's a complete instrument. And that it does amazing things the better that we treat it and the better that we treat people. You know, and I feel that you know, a little bit more of finding out what's going on and getting to know ourselves is probably the most important thing we can do as human beings mm-hmm. is really under, understand our instrument, you know, is because what we really are is we're antennas. And, 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 and so when people start to have panic attacks, when people start to feel like they're having a, 
a breakdown. Um, for me, it was either a breakdown or a breakthrough. And uh, so for me, right. So meditation for me was like taking out the garbage. I was able to clear the old stuff out and open up my mind so that I wouldn't shut down. And I was able to deal with the, the stressors or the things that make you want to yell or, but you know, the things that you that would usually set you off. I was able to deal with them in a much more calm way with my yoga. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you met, do you still meditate and do you, do you meditate and do yoga every day? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel that the, you have to have some sort of a practice. I mean, and I'm not saying every tell everyone, if you don't do Kundalini yoga, this is what this will do to you. No, what I'm saying is, is that it's called full potential. So whatever that makes you feel that you're hitting your full potential, if it's surfing, bike riding, and you have alone time to where you're, you, you won't even realize you're channeling, but you, there are people are channeling, you don't even realize that they're channeling. And it doesn't have yes. to be yoga. But for me, it was yoga. For somebody else, it could be bike riding, it could be kickboxing, something to where you're centered with your mind and your body, and you're, you're with yourself, getting to know yourself. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of people that say, do you have to do this or you're not going to go here. Or you are in certain religions. Do it this way. You're going to hell. You know, that's the first problem really is that judgment. We're all we're all connected as one and no one's better than the other. And we're always looking for somebody to follow somebody or someone to lead us mm -hmm. when I when it's about looking inside. It's internally looking inside and you'll find your answers and the things that you need. Yes. It's, it's right there. It's like, you know, and that's it's like they played a trick on everybody. They hit it right between our shoulders. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and earlier when you said, you know, you were, you were that, you know, you were hearing stuff in your shower. I had <laughs> you said that because my shower is such my meditation time that my friends joke because I'm always calling them and saying, Hey, I was taking a shower today and I totally had this insight. So my friends call it my magic shower which is really funny, but it's just that only time in the day that I consistently am not getting phone calls, texts, emails, and then I don't have that distraction. And that's, that's my time. And no, it's not, it's not necessarily the thing. It's not, you know, like you said, it doesn't have to be yoga. It doesn't have to be a formal kind of meditation. A shower can do it if you just open yourself up and allow that channeling to take place. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of, like I said, exercising your body is so important, you, you know what I mean? And, and so for whatever it is, and so getting back to, to yoga and, 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 and also water, water is a conductor. So I didn't even realize, I, I know now, but when I was going into this and every time I would hit water, I would get all these surges of energy and I would start to feel, feel energy, a lot of energy. Right. Um, and it was always around water. Uh, one of the things for me too was surfing. I, I, I surfed my whole life and it, 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 it brought a lot of balance to my life. So the ocean, you know, a lot of nature, a lot of things that I never, I, I mean, I did before, but I never really appreciated it the way I do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Yes. So everything with my life from the intention with what I do, the way I love, everything I do is different since I've had this awakening. So I do believe that these things happen. It is probably the most amazing thing that can happen to a human being that is going through an awakening. Yeah. Um, and I think that we need to help um, our government understand what that is so that they can make these corrections to help people and not, you know, not, mm -hmm. you know, not discard them, you know, back in the fifties and sixties when people were gay, they did the same thing. Right. They would say they're crazy, give them electroshock therapy, like, you know, and it's easy in, 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 in Western medicine when they don't understand or they, 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 they can kind of box you in. Once you're crazy, you're done. You're gone. You're not even part of society anymore. You have no rights. Right. And, and there's so, again, there's so much to unpack there. You were talking about nature and water. And during this interview, I don't know where you're at, but I keep hearing birds. And I love that because I'm assuming that you're outside somewhere, you're in nature somewhere. And I know for me, my entire mood shifts when I get outside, if I feel sun or wind or hear some birds or just watch the squirrels, I will go outside 
often during the day just to give myself the dose of nature and it makes me feel different and i know you know, they've done studies with the fluorescent lights and being inside it's bad for us and yeah there's a lot that western medicine needs to learn dancing is good for us nature is good for us animals is good for us water is good for us there's the things that we're naturally given on this planet that we are alienating ourselves from and i do believe we are making ourselves sick because of it oh absolutely the other, yeah absolutely the one thing i was going to say is look when we are put on on this planet god didn't make a mistake what you think that he put everyone here and he forgot something <laughs> yeah yeah he goes i'm gonna do everything just perfect but i'm gonna forget how to take care of these people right doesn't make doesn't make sense it's the people that want to have so much control that they start to create things because that make them think that they are in control they're not in control where nobody's in control we're not in control and and, and as soon as we figure that out um it'll be a lot easier for everyone to go on with their life and just kind of go, you know, and live their life. Because for me, yeah. I have the attack. I, I, I was able to kind of lose attachments to things that were unnecessary because they, they hold you down as a bondage. They, they pull you and you don't even realize it because it's real. The things that are said to you and the words that are said, it creates, it, it creates who you are because words are contracts and people don't realize when you say these things, they, they, they do become real. You put them out in the universe and it, it's a real, it's a, it's, it's an energy that's out there. Yes. So people really have to remember when they say things to one another, um, how real it is because, and if they don't think it is, it is, it is, yes. you know? Um, I mean, I kind of went all over the map there for a minute, but you know, but that's good. That's good. Because like, like I was saying earlier, there's so much to unpack in that and what's real and what's not real. There's a really, fine line between that there's realness in intention that doesn't have a physicality to it but the the intention creates that reality those words you know with raising kids you call a kid bad for long enough they're going to become bad you call them good and precious and perfect and they're going to become good and precious and perfect. So yes, we create a lot with our words, with our intentions, with our thoughts. And that has not, that has not well, always been recognized by the medical community. And I love that we have a medical community. Penicillin is my friend, but yeah, there's, there's that fine line and there's that balance. And as you were talking about that, and again, this is tangential, but my, I, I was born in 69 and my mom was talking about nursing when she was pregnant and she was having a baby, nursing and breast milk was considered something for like poor women. She said the idea was that doctors can formulate formula that is better for a baby. And that if you were really in the know and that you really, if you really wanted to do something great, you would use formula because that was superior. And how that's a warped belief by today's standards, but it was just that medical community idea and that sometimes something that we believe later on becomes so not true. You know, like you said, God creates the perfect breast milk for the perfect children. Science can't, can maybe replicate that in certain ways, but they can't make it better. And it's that balance of what do we know and what do we need to progress and what do we need to go back to and how to marry those things together. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. You said that, you know, the whole science, technology, religion, and all these things uh, coming together. It's as, as much as people say that this is a, everyone's looks at TV. This is a bad time. Things are happening. And, it's bad and dead, you know, because you, I mean, look on TV and the stuff's happening. It looks pretty grim, right? right. The, the president, he's out of his mind. Let's get, let's get this straight, okay? But ultimately, it takes things like this to happen for people to kind of, to notice when things are wrong. You know, yeah. not saying that you, you didn't notice, but it, it, and also for things to happen because people tend to, human beings need each other. And so when things happen like that, or if there's an event of some sort or, people are, are forced to meet each other. And then all of a sudden they get to, you, you always have to go through some dark to get to light. Yes. 
Yes, and you're right to, to increase that awareness as to what what is really the problem and what is really the solution and where we it, it helps us know where we're at on the scale. And you know, similar to you, you have this awakening experience that ended up being a dark time, but it's elevated you much higher. And I'm willing to bet that in some respects you needed that dark time in order to elevate. Uh, complete like this is the thing completely every time something happens that's good people when another thing happens that good they don't notice as much people notice things that happen when things happen that are amazing after something happens that's not so amazing so and, the, and the, one of the biggest what I'm trying to bring you to is on this is like well people are so fixated on everything trying to have a perfect life and perfect things right right well, it's not always like that. And you have to appreciate everything. And that's the one thing, you know, you, I was raised, my dad was a heroin addict and a pimp. I was raised on the street. I was a street hoodlum. Okay. Now I used to blame my mom and my dad for all the things and that it had, I, I've been raised and I, it's this their fault because I was, you know, I, I was a victim. It was a complete victim mentality. Well, what happened was, and when this awakening happened, I called my mom and out of nowhere, I'm like, mom, I love you. She's like, well, are what? you stoned? Are you, what's going on? <laughs> I, I, I love you, mom. And she's like, what do you mean? I go, mom, I, I think I love myself. I think, I think without all the things I'd went through, I wouldn't be who I am today. And I, and I thank you and I'm grateful for everything. And when I did that, I was so, I was able to release this, this victim mentality and our relationship had completely changed because I, I was done blaming her and holding her responsibility for the things that had happened to me in my life. Right. It didn't bother me anymore. Right. I was able to kind of go, okay, well, she did what she could do and, and I'm where I'm at. And, 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 and I was able to love myself because it, you know, when you're not able to love yourself, they say it, it is, it's impossible to love anybody else. So it took me to 48 years old to love myself and it was to go through that awakening. So I have to say it was the most amazing thing that ever has happened to me in my life. And I was a street hardened thug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I'm guessing there's listeners out there who are thinking, okay, bad stuff's happened to me and I haven't had an awakening. I want my awakening. <laughs> Do you have any words of advice for people who are where you were pre-awakening, a little angry, not so joyous with things? Do you have some words of advice for them? Um, yeah, I do. I do wake up and smile, just smile. Like seriously, like everybody wakes up thinking of all, not everybody, but I, you know, I, I, it's just be nice to one another. I think the more that people show respect to one another, you know, things start to change. It's just, it's actually, you know what, let me reverse that. Wake up and hug yourself. Start there. Just wake up and hug yourself. And if you start to figure out and start to love yourself, maybe the next person you see that day, you'll smile and hug them. I like that. I yeah. like that a lot. Yeah, that makes sense. And you're right. It's that respect and compassion and joy for yourself and for others. That's really important. So, it is. yeah. So how has your life shifted after this awakening? Because I know you used to produce, I know, you know, you, you said you had the attachment to a lot of the money and the material things, and now you've let a lot of that go and your life has shifted and it sounds like you're a lot happier, but what are some of the other ways that your life has shifted? What does that look like for you now? Um, it's just, it's different the way I, I view people, the way I view the world, you know, when you start to see things and know that there's, there's something up that there's, there's something after this. For sure, there's a lot going on, okay? And when you start to see that, you start to change the way you, you are with everything, the way you appreciate, the way I can hear the birds, the way I see the wind blow, how green the trees are. I just appreciate life on a different level because of I've, what I've learned through this awakening process. So I do feel that if we had platforms and other ways to, to, to help people with going through their awakenings, imagine the world, how it would be today, or just our, an, an area that we live in, if we could help people with something so amazing like this. That'd be, it's, it'd be, that's really what we need to do. Yes. 
So, yeah. uh, and, and, and it's, 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 it is, it's the most amazing thing that's ever happened to me. It's changed my life. My kid, I, it's, I'm not completely on the other side of it. And I have a 19 year old, a 20 year old, a 16 and an eight. So I still have kids and you know, you still have your day to day. There's still, you know, the, the stressors and the things that you, that, that take you off your mark if you let it. But life is different now because of the way I approach things, my view on things, you know, um, when you have an open heart going into things, it just changes the way the outcome ends. And then which changes you, the way you feel at the end of the day, you know? Yes. Thank you for the acknowledgement that you still have a life and that you still have stressors because oftentimes I believe people think that once they're enlightened, once they're awakened, ah, into yeah. <laughs> you know, nothing ever goes wrong, you never get stuck in traffic, you never, you know, have a bill that gets paid late and that things still go wrong. Oh my gosh, things go uh, wrong all the time. It's just life. It's yeah. life. It's just the way, it's the way it's just the way you perceive and look at things. In your mind, once you are the master of your mind, you are the master of the universe. Yes. Yes. I love that. So since you are the master of your mind and the master of your universe, what are you creating now for yourself? What's what's next? What is your next line, your next passion where are you going from here well right now i'm putting on a music festival called the space between space between.com space between.com is the podcast the space between is the music festival um we have snoop dog attached um akon um is attached uh now what we're doing is we're raising awareness um, for prison reform to bring in meditation and yoga into prisons. Oh, I love um, that. And also, yeah, and also sustainable products for lower income residents, lower income homes. Uh, so it's more affordable for people in lower income areas. Um, so that was one of the first things I did. Out of the, I got out of the mental institution. I started putting art shows together um, and I would donate the money to homeless. So you know, homeless is also comes from mental illness. A lot of people that fall, you know, fall to mental illness, you know, find themselves homeless. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I, when I was younger, I was homeless when I was a kid. Now, this, this was before the, the, you know, the episode. So I, I'd been in these, these situations in my life when I was much younger, but because of my street wisdom, I'll call it. Yeah. You know, I was able to put myself, uh, take myself out of that situation, and raise my, my kids in Malibu and, you know, have a very comfortable situation for myself. And after I saw that, um, that awakening, I guess the key thing that happened was, is I started to like and love people more than I love money. Yeah. So, so as soon as that little switch happened, I started to want to be of service and do things to help the community and leave this place, you know, because my kids are, are going to be here when I leave. And so, and, and so are a lot of other people. So, you know, we're just the custodians of the things that we have here. Like we don't take it with us. Mm -hmm. uh, like people, they think they've taken a hearse doesn't have luggage racks. So has anyone checked lately? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> yeah. No, so, they don't. Yeah. So, you know, it's the, these are the things for me is, is just is putting things in perspective, human beings and money and people and treating and treating people. And I've learned a lot too about animals. I, I, I always had issues with the dogs I had. I, I love animals. Just everything, the way I am with everyone and everything has changed. Really? Due to this, due to this awakening. Yeah, absolutely. I want to hear more about animals. Tell me about that. Um, I just, we had animals growing up and I just felt like I, I had them, but they were just animals to me. There was like a dog. Okay. There's a dog. You know? Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then all of a sudden when it happened, it just changed. They become, they became more than a dog. It became a soul partner, like, but in a different way. It was an animal, but I can't explain it. Then I got a horse. So like, don't, don't, like, so I went dog, dog, two dogs, two horses. You know, I, I just, I guess the way, 
even everything. I mean, I, the way I looked at the ocean, I felt like everything lives. So when you feel that and you can tap into that, you can, it, it, it just changes the way you, you are with everything because I believe everything lives. I hear the ocean speak to me. Now that sounds a little wild. No, I get it. But I, I get but you. I, right. I, I, I do. And I, I feel it. So, you know, I feel that I am very aware of the things around me since this awakening and, and it's intensified um, the things that I pick up on. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is exciting. And I feel that other people out there, if they're, if they're listening to this, it's like, everybody has this. This isn't just me. This is, right. we're, we, we all, this is an ancient, ancient thing that was created by God. Right? Yes. And, it, and it's here now. We still have it, but we forgot how to use it. Yes. Okay. So much around that as well. Your kids. Are they learning how to use it? Are they more naturally in tune because you're their dad? What's going on with your kids and that? Because you're right. I think we all have it. I was lucky enough to be raised in an environment where my mom, as I would say, oh, I hear this or I see this or I'm picking up on this. She'd be like, yeah, I'm with you. Instead of that's not, and that's not true. How so? I feel like our planet is evolving in that way that it's becoming more and more open. How is it with your kids? What's the story of that right now? Um, very difficult in the beginning and in the middle, being that they, when they saw anybody with a turban or anything to do with yoga, Kundalini yoga, or they felt that I, I made a choice and I chose that over them. So it was very difficult for them, right? Okay. And once they understood that that's it, that's not what it was um it, so it was it, it was really hard to get through that because even if i asked my kids to go to yoga with me they wouldn't they 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 misinterpreted they thought that those people brainwashed me um that i was taken advantage of like they would say why would you yeah why would you take advantage of a sick man like it was you know really and um now it's not because i held my ground i never i never I never deterred. I, I wasn't sway. I stayed firm with my belief in who I was. You know what I mean? I, I, I knew. I'm like, no, I, I, I believe what's happening to me. And, and I'm, I got to stay here. And, and they'll understand later why I didn't take the medication and, and why I, you know, I stood for what I stand for. And, and, and now they're, you know, they're open to it. Now my son's doing yoga. Now my son's shooting the podcast. So it just took a little time. You know, time heals. Yes, it does. It does. So how was it that you got out of the mental institution without taking the medicine? How were you able to finagle that shift? Uh, because I wasn't, I was, I was very lucid and very there, but um, I just started, what happened was I, well, it, <laughs> what happened was a three day hold turned into a 15 day hold. So a 5150 is a three day hold. A 52, so they go up, okay? So a 5250 is a 15 day hold ward of the state. So what happened was when I went into the mental institution and I saw what they were doing and they were beating up and hurting the people that were in there. So I started defending those people. And when I defended them, I got a 5250, which oh was- Oh my gosh. Yeah. So once that happened, I was, I started calling attorneys and I was, you know, I I started raising up on them and they started, they were worried that they could have had a lawsuit and I didn't seem, you know, I, I was, I was saying a little bit of interesting things, but I was there, you know, and I wasn't violent, but when I, but when I started um, protecting the people that are in there, it, it, you know, Mm -hmm. at that point they wrote, they didn't really know what to do. So I ended up getting out before the 50, before the 15 days, but they released me to a rehabilitation in Malibu. Um, they said the only way that they would let me out is if I went to a, re- a rehab. And that's what my, my ex-wife, she, she agreed to that. So I was at a rehab. I wasn't on any drugs. Everybody was like, what are you here for? And I said, well, um, I smoke a little weed, but only because I've been you know, stressed because I can't go home. <laughs> but, <laughs> but ultimately they're like, wait a minute, this guy's in a rehab for weed. This doesn't make sense. Um, so there was a litany of things that happened and, and, and from 
rehabs to mental institutions to psychiatrists to just wanting to get to the root of what was happening and they didn't have any real anything they couldn't figure, you know they they had one the schizophrenia 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 you know and i just it it, you know, I kept saying the same thing. They kept saying the same thing and I wouldn't take medication. And so I wasn't able to go home. I was able to get out and get to the rehab. Um, and my ex said, if you take this medication, I'll let you come home. And I never did. I never went back home ever again. Wow. You know, I left on, I left on Thanksgiving day, 2017. And never, I never went back home ever again. That's powerful. <laughs> you were brave. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't plan it that way. I just, I remember I left with a little black Patagonia bag right. and I thought I was, I, I thought in my heart I was going home. I, I built in this family and, and, and all the things I built a, a, a dream, a $10 million dream home in Malibu. And in and, and a week after I was done building it, I left and never went back home. And I gave them, I left everything. No, I did. I gave them, I left all the money, everything. And, um, you know, I, I didn't, I don't know how to explain it. It just. Well, it didn't matter. It's, you know, like no, we're thinking about the luggage rack. It's stuff that would only slow you down on your journey, really. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, it's, it's, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. And, and I, that the, for somebody that acted a certain way and conducted themselves a certain way with business and the way. I moved through, you know, moved through the, through the planet, you know, the way I did things, it completely changed. You know, I was feeding homeless people. Um, I was, I was putting art shows on with the biggest street artists in the world and I would donate that money to homeless. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I, I just, I, I just changed my crosshairs and I yes. just started to do things in a way that would help and do, you know, do things for the planet and that I felt good about. Mm -hmm. I felt that I had done things this my whole life that were very self-centered for me and my family and because that's what I knew and so I felt it was my time just to give give something back mm -hmm. and I say that I but let me let me just preface a little bit I, I say that like that like oh, I'm just here to give it back well let me just be really honest I actually started doing that because I saw what's really out there and I felt I had to do something quickly for the things that I did not saying bad, good, right. but just, I just felt that it was time for me to give back. Yes. And I want to point out too, because in my experience, whether it's dealing with money personally or with my clients and friends and family, there is a lot of fear around money that I need more, that I need to hoard it, that I need to keep it. And it's interesting when you start giving back the flow becomes a flow and more comes in and more comes out when you're really doing good things with it and you're taking care of it's not like you are you know living on the street and you can't eat the more we give the more we're taking care of it truly is a life of abundance when we share that abundance it is and a lot of people don't know it takes a minute you know to understand manifesting and manifestation and the things that i know that you know speaking to you you're very aware of these things and and, and you know what and I, the more that we talk about it the more like we can get this message out that people start to understand it and it catches on mm -hmm. um and that's the importance of this message is is really understanding what's out there what's going on uh because if look if we were Sikh, buddhist or Native American, right? Mm -hmm. If this had happened to me, if this had happened to me, and I, this would have been like puberty, they would have said, "Oh, he's going to awaken. This is his rite of passage. We need to help him." Yes. But because we're not equipped in the Western world, what you'd think, like, "Come on, this is the United States of America. We're ahead of everybody," right? <laughs> Wrong answer. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong answer. You know, actually, around two thousand years ago, they killed this dude for walking around helping people and spreading some love, right? Yeah. Jesus. Yes. Like in there 2000 years later, people do the same thing. It's, it's, it hasn't changed. They send well, you to a mental institution. Right. And, and, and that's sad. So if there's a way that, and even if you go to a church, if you went to a church, okay. So you went to a church and you said the things I'm telling you today, they, they would say, Oh, you're, you're done. You're, you're, that's like sacrilegious. Mm -hmm. So, so you go, you go to, you know, a church and you start telling them that you're having the spiritual 
experience, they would, they would commit you. They would commit you as well. Right. And you're right. So many of the different rules around the different religions, you can only have a spiritual awakening if it looks this way or this way and everything else is wrong. But the fact is we are all on our own journey to source back to spirit and it can look different and it does look different and it should look different for everyone. Yeah, it mm -hmm. should. It really should. Mm -hmm. It really should. So I know you've got the music festival, you've got the art festival. What else is coming up for you? How are you going to help the, you know, you'd mentioned the, the government, the U.S., the medical community. Do you have any other plans about, and you've got your podcast, which spreading information helps, but do you have any other plans that, that you'd like to share with us? Um, those are the, 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 the that's the low hanging fruit. I think there's things yeah. out there that I, I've been thinking about as far as, um, you know, insurance companies accepting, um, uh, accepting yoga, Kundalini yeah. yoga, because if you actually did the analytics on people doing yoga and taking care of themselves, if it covered for insurance, they'd have less medical visits to the doctor. Yeah. Right. So yes. if you actually thought, cause it, it's, it, it could help and benefit somebody. So, and just making it things that are more accessible for people for, they could help them with these types of things, you know, and, 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 and yoga being one of those things that isn't very expensive, but could do so much help for so many people. And that's what I meant getting into correctional facilities. They, they had a study where they, they started bringing yoga and meditation into inner city schools in Los Angeles. And it cut the violence by about 50%, they said. Um, any stuff you can look, you, you can go online and, and find this stuff. It's, it's you know. It's they, not hard. It's, no, it's, it's out there. So for right now, I mean, there's, there's, there's a lot of ideas I have, but ideas are 5%, right? Yeah. Executing them is 95%. So I, I don't want to be jack of all trades, master of none. I want to focus on what I'm doing at the music festival and the art show. Um, and then I will see where that takes me. Yes. Well, I am really excited to hear about both of those. Those sound amazing. Um, once again, give the website for listeners so they can go check it out. If they're in the area, they can show up. I don't know if you've got any other ways to participate virtually, but I'd love to help you spread the news on that. Yeah, you can visit us at spacebetween.com. Perfect. And our handle for Instagram is space between now. Perfect. Well, Joey, thank you so much for your time and for being brave enough to share your story to the masses and to be able to just stand up there and be like, yeah, this is what happened to me. These are the benefits and this is what I'm doing with it. And for not falling further into that victim mode and being like, yeah, I was committed. This was awful. Thank you for being the light and channeling the light for other people. I really appreciate it for myself, for my family, for humanity, and for the future. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This was great. Thank you. You are welcome. Listeners, please reach out to either of us if you've got any questions on anything, if you'd like to share your own awakening story, or if you just have questions like, ah, this thing is happening to me and I don't know what it means. I want to talk to somebody. I can talk. I bet you Joey can talk too. I want you all to have a fantastic, wonderful, sparkly week. And as usual, don't forget to flaunt. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on the Dream Vision 7 radio network. Come release outdated labels, roles, and scripts. Reveal the calling of your soul and re-choreograph your own life, even when you're unsure of what you want. In five bold and glittering strokes, you too can build your dreams and live your sparkle. Find out more about Laura at PyramidFusion.com.